Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Tuesday of Holy Week, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out what he, uh, whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After he took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at the table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast, or go give something to the poor. So he took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me. As I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow me later. Peter said to him, Master, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, during these uh, early days of Holy Week, we are being prepared for the Holy Triduum, beginning on Holy Thursday and concluding on Easter. And... um, Today we are being prepared for the upper room because that's where this particular passage of Scripture takes place. And here we have to remember that John is an eyewitness. So the one who is writing this gospel is an eyewitness to what is taking place and the drama that unfolds uh, at the Passover meal as uh, Judas is singled out as the one who would betray Jesus. And here we have actually two types of betrayal. We have Judas, and then we have the denial of Peter that is predicted. Now, of course, the most poignant is uh, the betrayal that we're talking about with respect to Judas Iscariot. Now, Judas Iscariot, uh, the name, and again here in John's Gospel, we have uh, Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot. Uh, Iscariot is really a Hebrew uh, blending of two words, ish kerioth, which means man of Kerioth. And so that's where Judas is from. And so that's where we get that surname Iscariot, is it means man of Kerioth. And so Jesus has his uh, disciples, his apostles there in the upper room. And this conversation begins with Jesus being very troubled. And again, John sitting right next to Jesus, he is right next to him, sees something physically change in Jesus' countenance. And it's at that point that he says, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The amen, amen, verily, verily, uh, so be it, so be it, is a way of emphasizing what I'm about to say is very important. And the disciples are at a loss because they've walked together for all of this time, and how could one of them be a betrayer? It just doesn't seem possible. And so, as we know in some of the other Gospels, they even go, Lord, it can't be me. And finally, in uh, his response to John, 
personally, John leaned over and said, Master, who is it? And Jesus uh, very quickly pointed out, it's the one to whom I hand this morsel. And he handed it to Judas. And there's something interesting is said at that point. John says this, after he took the morsel, Satan entered him. Now, this must have come from some reflection after the upper room when John, in reflecting back on what took place at that particular moment and looking at uh, Judas Iscariot and and then knowing uh, after the fact that he had already met with uh, the leaders, with the chief priests, the betrayal was already uh, planned. But here, with the taking of the morsel, This is when Judas chose to take that final step of walking out and betraying the Son of Man. So this was a very powerful moment. This was a moment when Satan had his way in Judas' life and used him uh, to bring about the, uh, the death of the Savior. Little did Satan know that he was actually playing in to the redemptive plan. And so after he took the morsel, uh, Judas left. And of course, uh, the rest uh, we follow as we go through the entire uh, time of his passion, death, and resurrection uh, in the various scriptures that we read throughout the week. So we have uh, Judas Iscariot uh, taking uh, advantage of the situation and betraying Jesus. And then we have a second encounter in our scripture, and that is with, uh, with Simon Peter. And again, Jesus, in looking at all of the other disciples, says, uh, I'm going to say to you what I've already said to uh, those around, and they may remember when he said this earlier. He said, um, where I'm going, you cannot come. So uh, he said it to him that, the, the journey he's going to have to make, this journey of redemption, is one that he was going to have to make on his own. But T, uh, Peter takes it a step further. Master, where are you going? Where he says, again, where I'm going, you cannot follow, though you will follow later. And that, again, is a prophecy having to do with the fact that Peter will, in fact, give up his life as well. Peter, of course, did not understand that particular dynamic of it. And Peter's response is, why can't I follow you? I'll lay down my life. And this is where Jesus uh, takes uh, Peter and, and, and shocks him quite a bit, saying, look, amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. You're also going to be one who betrays, but just with a denial. You are not sending me to my death, but you're denying that you are a part of who I am. The beautiful thing for us to realize is that this was uh, a denial that would be forgiven after the resurrection, that Peter would find himself again cleansed and healed of that betrayal that he knew that, uh, that he had done once it took place. So today in our reading, we are again getting prepared for Holy Thursday. It's a really good thing during these first three days of Holy Week for us to kind of reflect on these small little portions of what is going to be the grand drama. And today, just think about the fact that it is John himself sitting at the right at, at the side of Jesus who actually uh, <clears throat> is describing this event as it's unfolding. So this is a first-person uh, explanation of something that is very powerful in setting up and releasing the redemption, and the plan of God for the salvation of all mankind. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the Lord willing, we will be together tomorrow for another installment of Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.